Okay, good morning. Here I am live from Keem Studios today to make this video for you guys. Um, we're going to go through a couple things. Uh, the general theme of our video today, as you can see on the board behind me, is going to be talking about machines and something called mechanical efficiency. Um, so we'll get into that as we go. Um, you may recall last week we talked about the calculation of work and power and what work is in physics. Okay, so work, as you might remember, hopefully, is the product of force times distance. Anytime that a force acts on an object and moves it a distance in the same direction as the force, it is considered work. That was calculated with that formula, W equals F times D. So, as an example of that, suppose I have a mass and I want to get that mass up a certain distance, raise it to height for whatever reason. Okay, if I apply a force to that mass, and you can see the spring scale go down as I do that, and that force is going to be equal to that, and I raise it a distance to get it up on top of this wooden block, I have done work. Okay, the product of that force and distance. It's possible though that I might not want to do that work directly like that. Maybe I could use a device that's going to help me with that tool. So I might choose a simple machine to do the same job. Here I have a, a lever apparatus, okay? And I can hook the mass over to this side of the lever. Now, if I want to do the same job and get that mass up a certain height distance, I can now use this lever. I can apply the force over here and raise the mass on the other side of the lever over here. Okay. Now, things just got more complicated when I did that. And that's because instead of work just being done once, work was actually done in two places. Okay. I did work to the machine on this angle, okay? So I apply a force over a distance here, right? And we call that the work input that was done to the machine, okay? So my force and distance that I apply on this side of the lever is called the work input. The lever then applies a force over a distance on the other side. Okay. So, what do you think that's called? You guessed. That's called the work output. So on this side of the lever, I have work output. Right? So I'm going to have two places work is being done. Work is done over here on the input side, and work is done over here on the output side. Okay? So actually things got more complicated than just simply lifting the weight directly. Let me show you another couple of types of simple machines and see if we can... Uh, see where the work input and output is on those as well. I'll be right back. Okay, here I have a pulley mechanism, which is attached to a fixed point at the top, and I have my mass down the bottom. So if I want to use this device, simple machine, to do the same work that I did by lifting the mass up onto this block. Now I can pull on the string on this side and my mass goes up. Once again, I have work occurring in two places. I am applying a force and moving, moving the string a distance on this end, okay? So where the user of the machine applies the force and does the work, we call that the work input. So here's the work input over here where I'm pulling on the string. The pulley then applies a force to the mass, lifting it up in the air a certain distance, right? And that's going to be your work output. Um, one more example of a simple machine. Be right back. I got one more. It's called lever. It's called pulley. And this is a device or a machine called an inclined plane. 
so I could do the same work with them. Okay. So instead of simply lifting this mass up this distance, I can put it on the inclined plane and slide it up the plane. Right. Now, again, work takes place in two places. The work that I do moving the mass up the plane, the force and the distance here, is going to be my work input. On this side, and my work output would be the force and the distance of what it would be to lift the mass directly on this end of the uh, okay, so going back to something else we mentioned last week is why would I choose a device, a simple machine, to do the work instead of just doing the work once, lifting the object directly up? Um, why would I choose a machine to do it? And if you remember correctly, there's two reasons. I'm going to go get my lever again and bring it back over this way. So you might think, well, why would I want to make it more complicated? A couple different reasons. One of the reasons might be, you'll notice if I use this lever to lift this mass, I get to pull down and the mass goes up. Okay? That can be advantageous sometimes in certain situations. Um, think about pushing down on a screwdriver and lifting up the lid of a paint can to pry it up. Okay, that's handy. Um, if I had a pulley system and I want to get my flag up at the top of the flagpole, just stand on the ground and pull the pulley and get the flag to raise, you can see how that's advantageous. So one of the things that a machine does is it can change the direction of the force that I'm applying, and that can be handy. Another thing that a machine could do, and I have to change my lever around a little bit to make this happen, I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience, and this is actually something that we're going to talk about more later in the week. But if you notice now, I moved the fulcrum closer to the object that I'm going to lift, the work output side of the lever. Okay? When I do this, I have to apply very little force on this one. The amount of force that I have to apply is reduced to lift the same mass over here. So this lever is actually making me stronger than I actually am. And I can lift more weight using the lever than I could lift just directly doing the work myself. Okay? So that's the other thing that a machine can do for us. It can change the direction that the force is being applied, which can be helpful sometimes. And the other thing it can do is simple machines allow us to multiply our input force, okay? The force that we apply over here becomes greater because we're using the simple machine, okay? Again, that's a lesson for another day, and uh, we'll get into that later in the week. That's something called mechanical advancement. Um, and again, we'll talk more about that. What I wanted to talk about today, though, is mechanical efficiency. So, one of the questions you'll sometimes ask on, say, a test like the Science TSSA is, do machines make less work? When you use a machine, do you, use, do, you do excuse me, less work than you would when you don't? And a lot of people get confused by this, and they say, well, of course it makes less work. Why else wouldn't I, or why else would I use a machine unless it was saving me work? But this is wrong, okay? When a machine is used, you are actually always doing more work than if you did not use the machine, okay? The force and the distance on this side, they are always greater than the force and the distance on that side. Um, and the reason why is because there's always a little bit of friction in this lever, it's a very small amount, but it's there, that removes some of the work input and doesn't convert all of it to work output. So you never get as much work output as you could do as you put in work input. Again, why would I use a the machine then? If it's actually making more work for me to do to use the machine than not, why would I use it? 
And the answer is because it makes the work easier, even though it's technically more work, forward time distance work. Right? Again, we gotta watch out for the fact that we usually associate the word work with effort. We think work means effort, because that's where we use it in, uh, use the word in common usage. But physics work is force times distance. Right? So there's always more work here than work there. Now, not all machines are the same. Some machines are pretty good. You put in so much work here, you get almost the same amount of work there. This lever would be a good example of a machine that's pretty good at that. Okay, there's only a little bit of friction here, so we get a lot of work out that we put in. But um, the more complex things become, we tend to have uh, a lessening of that. The, 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 uh, the amount of work that you get out is reduced. So anyhow, this comparison, a lot of times we like to compare it for a particular machine, each machine. How much work we put in versus how much work we get out. And of course, there's a term for that. That is what we call mechanical efficiency, which I mentioned at the start of the video. You can see on the board behind me. Okay. So this is something that is interesting about machines and that we can measure and that we can compare to learn how well the machine works. And it is calculated. Here's another formula, which you guys are going to see, especially in tomorrow when I make a video. We have a, uh, we have a worksheet. You're going to have to do some calculations. Mechanical efficiency is abbreviated ME. Okay? And it is calculated by taking WO, work output, and dividing it by WI, work input, and then we multiply that times 100 because we express mechanical efficiency as a percent. We might say something like this machine is 80% efficient, or this machine is 50% um, efficient, whatever the case might be. Okay? So, me equals 1 over we times 100. Mechanical efficiency is work output divided by work input times 100. Now, as I've said before, Simple machines like the lever system I showed you, the pulley, the inclined plane, tend to be pretty efficient, okay? There is no machine that is 100% efficient. So a machine's efficiency always has to be less than 100%. Of course, 100% efficiency means whatever work you put in, you're getting the same amount out. And like I said before, because there's always a little bit of friction, some of this work is not going to get over here. Okay, so it's impossible to have a machine that was 100% efficient or great. Uh, that does not happen. That's one of the rules. Okay. Well, I hope I said everything that I wanted to say about machines and mechanical efficiency. I hope that makes sense. Um, we're going to give you some practice problems and things like that in a video that will post. Oh, here's one thing else I wanted to mention. I just forgot. Sorry. Um, here's a rule about mechanical efficiency. Right? I'm going to put my lever away, my simple machine. Now this is a device called a witch. And maybe you can see it starts to get a little more complicated. Right? It is not as simple as just a lever. All of a sudden now, I have a wheel and axle, right? I have pulleys, I have multiple machines working together. So if you remember the term for this from last week, when we have more than one simple machine together, just like the worksheet we did, we call it a compound machine, okay? Again, this has a wheel and axle that I turn here. I'm turning the wheel part of this and it's moving the axle part. It's hooked up to a pulley system, it has gears. Here's a lever. Right, that opens the winch and shuts it, okay? But here's the rule. As things become more complicated, as you get more and more machines involved in a device, the efficiency goes down, okay? More moving parts, more friction, the efficiency starts to decline. So we get, again, pretty high efficiencies with things like levers and pulleys and stuff. But as I get more and more of these things in there, it starts to go down. And when you get into complex devices, let's say an automobile that we drive down the road, which has all these moving parts, our efficiencies get pretty bad. 
Um, matter of fact, it said that if I put a tank of gas in my car, only 10% of that gas actually makes me get from point A to point B. The other 90% is wasted, friction creates heat, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a pretty good, uh, or a pretty big waste of energy. Um, certainly if we can make cars more efficient, that would be a, a big cost savings and energy savings. Okay, so the more complex the device, the lower the efficiency. All right, so let's just review a couple things and I'll wrap it up for today. Okay, so going back to the start, I can do work directly. I can lift an object straight up for us at a distance. Why would I ever use a machine? Okay, and the answer is because machines make work easier somehow. Okay, and they can make work easier in two ways. They change the direction of the force that I apply, which is called the input force, or they can change the size of the force that I apply. Okay? Both of those things can be very handy and make machines very useful. Okay, machines also make things more complicated, <coughs> as we saw. If I just do the work directly, I have one force, one distance, work. If I use a machine, all of a sudden I have the work that I do to the machine and the work that the machine does to the object that I'm doing the work on. So, that work that I do to the machine, of course, once again, is called the work input, WI, work done by the user on the machine, and the work that the machine does on the object is called the work output. Okay, so now we have work taking place in two places. Okay, we talked about efficiency. So, what is this term mechanical efficiency? Well, it is a comparison of the work input on the machine to the work output. It is a number that gives us an idea of how well we're converting work from one side to the other. Okay, it's expressed as a percentage. 100%, 75%, 80%, etc. No machine can have an efficiency of 100%. And why is that again? Because there's always a little bit of friction that needs to be overcome, causes you to lose some work. And the other rule that we stated was the more complex the machine, the lower the efficiency is going to be. So things like automobiles are getting down 10, 20% low efficiency. So they're complicated devices. Okay. And finally, here's the trick question that they'll always put on the science PSSA and you'll see on tests and it will trick some of you, but you gotta remember this. Does using a machine make less work? Do I do less work using the machine? No. Okay. Using a machine requires the user to do more work than just doing the work directly. Now remember, this is physics work, force times distance. If you think about work as being effort, this is where this confuses you because maybe it's less effort to use the machine, but effort and work are not the same thing in physics. Why would I use the machine? Because it makes it easy. Okay, the work is easier to me. And I might say that's what it feels, but it's actually always not. When you use a simple machine, you always do more work than if you had not. Okay, I think that's the last slide. Yes, it is. So I'll wrap it up there. Um, tomorrow we will post a video um, talking a little bit more about mechanical efficiency. Perhaps if you watch this, and I probably should have said this at the start of the video, but if you want to take some notes or something on the things that I talked about, that might be a good idea. Okay? So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you want, why don't you, uh, on Schoology, just to let me know whether you watch this video or not, send me a message and tell me whether or not I should quit my job here at Bedford Middle School and go to Hollywood to become the next Bill Nye, or maybe after watching this video that maybe I could just stay right here where I am. Anyway, hope everybody's well. Um, we'll see you soon for the next video.